Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Ash. Today's video, we'll be doing an in-depth dive into the lead of the If you want me to go over the whole song, this video, but today I will be going over the serum preset, the processing I use, all the different layers, and the overall group processing so that it fits into the song. And before we get too deep into the thick of it, I want to shout out the sponsor of this video you're ready to put that final polish on your song, this video sponsor Mixia is perfect for you. If you're struggling to make your music sound as good as the professionals and you're ready to release it but you need that last little bit of polish, that's where Mixia comes in. Anyone who signs up can put the finishing touches on their track in minutes to get a customizable and polished result that makes you confident to upload and share. Meaning, you can also upload it straight to streaming services since this is part of DistroKid. How does it work? You've got a simple and customizable menu. It's only $99 a year or $8.25 a month if we're doing quick math for unlimited mastered tracks. You get unlimited previews of all the mastered songs and even a free download if you want to try it out. Just upload it, listen to it, customize it, download it, and from there you can head straight to the upload form on DistroKid for your newly mastered track. So thanks to Mixia for sponsoring this video. You can get 7% off with my VIP link down in the description below. Now let's get back to it. Excuse my brain if it jumps around a lot. This is what you get on my Patreon when I do in-depth videos. So I'm gonna do that for the channel today to number one, the serum preset. So the main lead on its own sounds like Very whooshy, very loud, very obnoxious, called it more mayo because actually when I was making the song, I took a little break, headed to McDonald's to grab some food and it took me forever to get my food because there was a dude at the front of the line being like, excuse me, there's no mayonnaise on my sandwich. You need to remake this holding up the line. And I'm like, you know what? That's the level of obnoxiousness that the lead needs to be. And so I named the lead after him more mayo so rather than me going step by step being like, all right now you turn on oscillator a select this wavetable we're gonna turn the unison i'm not gonna do that what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna show you how i reverse engineer sounds because that's actually how i made this uh, somebody in my chat when i was making the song showed me the sound designer or artist fabian mazur you can go check out his stuff there but he had a little video like trying to sell his iso exo presets and luckily i was able to see his screen and uh, kind of hear what the sounds were doing so I reverse engineered that and I'm gonna show you how I did that uh, basically what parameters you're looking out for to see how to really design a sound and make a sound come to life so first thing I look at is not so much what wavetable they're using but what their unison their octaves and what warp modes they use. So those are like the top three things I look at. And so for this one, it was B sod square, where it's an analog one. And then this one is a distorted bass dropper, is a digital one. So it looks like he combined analog with a digital and both spread out uh, equally over the octave. So the analog one will be plus two, minus two. These oscillators are very interchangeable. Uh, they will change the timbre of the sound. But the more important thing about this type of sound especially is what unison is being used because this sound has a sort of like wideness and whooshiness to it and uh, making sure that you have the proper octave spread and proper unison spread adds to that more than what actual wavetable you pick. I just did this to copy. I could have probably experimented a bit more by going into different wavetables, but cycling through those won't give as big an impact with the difference of the sound as, say, adjusting the octave or adjusting the unison. So that's why I look for those first. Next thing I look at is the warp modes, and that's this knob right here. And these will change your sound a lot because it's literally like warping the wavetable. So with these warp modes, they, they change the overall timbre of the wavetable. And these are things that you experiment with in order to get the sound design. 
Now before you go changing a bunch of stuff, I recommend cycling through warp modes and just turning the knob and, and hearing what it would sound like. It's hard for me to uh, kind of uh, show that right now because what I do have are LFOs and envelopes mapped to uh, literally everything. And the reason why I pick those to be mapped is because you turn the knob and the sound changes dramatically. And a lot of this type of sound design comes from the movement of one parameter to another. Utilizing LFOs and envelopes are like very, very important. That's kind of the next step here, but I'm gonna jump back to uh, the different types of warp mode. Really popular one, you've always seen me use it. FM from B, that's a really good one. And this sync really changes up the sound. It almost like turns it into super high pitched uh, type type stuff can't really hear the difference right now because i already have the lfo's map and uh, i don't really want to ruin the sound while i'm doing this video so uh, you're just gonna have to believe me on that <laughs> But let's move on to the LFOs and the envelopes because this is really where you will be shaping the sound. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what happens when I just deactivate all of my LFOs and what this sound ends up sounding like. It literally has no mayo. There's nothing in it. It's a nothing burger. Like what? What's going on? What? what? Oh, you know why? Because the volume's down. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god. I'm such a good freaking... Producer. The reason all you were hearing is nothing was because the oscillators are actually turned down. All right, there's the good example of it. Okay, so that's how that's how different the sync makes something sound, right? And you want to use that to your advantage. The point here is you listen for big gigantic changes and that's what you map your LFO to. One of the big things you can like first off starting out doing sound design, you don't even have any warp modes turned on. Set your LFO to the level this here. Let's activate it. And when you have your LFO set, like the sound is already taking shape just because I'm adjusting the volume. which is why LFO on level is such a good place to start. Another thing I have is an envelope that's kind of like the master of the volume control of this sound. Like I don't want this thing to be sustained out super long. It's like a very plucky sound. So the envelope is more of a sharp descent. And, the, and this LFO is kind of matching this. Not sure if the timings are exact, doesn't matter if they are it's actually better if they're not because it adds a bit more nuance to the sound but that's where this comes from here that's why this envelope is set like that so like like i'm saying a big portion of sound design and like making a sound like sound cool is just the volume like how long does the sound play out what's like the overall beginning middle and end of the sound if you can nail that you have like 75 percent of the sound down and everything else is going to be very subtle let's move on to the next parts of our lfo which is my sync and my bend so if i do those it just adds a bit more character and that's what you're doing you're just adding little bits of character now i also have another one mapped to the noise because i want to have that little high-end obnoxiousness on the synth so what i end up doing is have the lfo start up here and then it turns down so it's almost like matching this envelope's energy so you have that little bit of high-end crunch right at the beginning of the sound and then it fades away really quickly that adds a lot of that bite to the sound it's like almost a distortion and the reason i do that as well is because i know i'm going to be adding wombo combo which is my ott and ott loves to pull those sounds out we'll get into the processing part in a little bit but whenever i'm adding these little subtleties i'm always thinking of what's going to happen when i run it through ott because ott really brings those out and that's why i like to do a lot of sound designing with ott already on so the next portion of the sound comes from this filter here a big thing that you can can do with any sound design is different ways to sweep through the frequencies. You can do that a lot of ways through EQ, through filter. From Fabian Mazur's video, I saw that he was using like a bandpass notch filter. So I just copied that and kind of played around with the cutoff until it would sweep the frequencies that I wanted. And that'll add a real vocal quality to the synth. 
And because we're adding that kind of vocal equality, we want to keep it in key. I always make sure to enable key tracking so that based on whatever MIDI notes we put in, the filter accounts for that. Because when you sweep through frequencies, you're actually sweeping through different notes as well. And that's a whole other thing. That's a whole sound audio engineering thing that we can get into, but a good practice to keep that on so that you kind of stay in tune. This is one place that you can do a lot of experimentation on for sound design. I'm not going to cycle through any filters because I don't want to lose what I have with this sound, but this is a really good place to find the character of your sound. We actually move on to our effects tab. This is what I wasn't able to grab from Fabian's video because he only looked at this side of everything. He did not flip over to effects. So we had to do a bit of guesswork on this, but without all of the effects on it, very different sound. Wow, so this is another place where you can really add character to your sound. Thing I like to do, add distortion. You know me, my goal for this sound was pure obnoxiousness and distortion is always great for that. It adds more harmonics to the sound, more stuff that for OTT to pull from. The more harmonics you add into a sound, the more like full it sounds. And this is just one layer and it's still sounding like not too bad. Next one I'll add is compressor, which is our first OTT. So this is like a built-in OTT inside Serum. If you need more information on what OTT does, I do have a video on that as well. Essentially taking all the quiet sounds, making them loud and taking all the loud sounds, making them quiet, thus over the top compressing it, just making sure you can hear everything. Meaning if you do like distortion, noise, everything blends together. That's where a lot of that characteristic bass music sounds come from. But that OTT wasn't enough. The big thing that changed it, Again, suggestion from chat, reverb filter, not reverb, reverb filter. So this is something that you can add either here uh, on this side, if you want to add it before any of the effects, but I chose to do it at the very end of the effects chain. And this is where it gets crazy. It just adds this incredible depth to the sound, but it also makes it extremely atonal. You hear that? This is the knob that like really makes big difference. So that's why I've mapped LFO2 to it. Now you can really hear it sound like it's sweeping. It like, it does everything. It, it sweeps through frequencies and adds character and depth. So this filter kind of goaded. And actually, as I was doing, like writing my breakdown for this specific video that you're watching, I noticed that if I turn down the filter effects, it actually makes it a lot cleaner and I probably would have wanted to do that in the final version. That sounds so much better to me. The video's already out there, so that's it. That's GG. This is first layer. This is it. These oscillators, this filter, the very important envelopes and LFOs mapped to all of the knobs that sound cool. Level is especially a good one to start on for the rhythm and whooshiness and then effects to really add depth to it and this reverb filter to add the nuance, depth, sweep through frequencies and character. And this will really get pulled out by OTT and the processing, which is what I'm about to go over now. Head down here, let me show you what it sounds like without the processing. So it sounds really thin and weird. How I do my processing is I'll actually do Wombo Combo, which is OTT Saturator. But that's not enough. A big thing I've been starting to add onto sounds that I'm working on is corpus. It's just another layer of depth and character to the sound. This is a resonator. What it will do, it'll combine these different sounds with like whatever you have as an input in your synth and it will give it a lot of character. I keep using the word character, but like that's, you know, that's, that's synths. <laughs> This is really good if you want to start adding metallic stuff to your sounds. I also make sure to click this little triangle and make sure I set the MIDI in so that it also stays in key. As atonal as it sounds, I want to have as many opportunities for <laughs> the sound itself to find the key. And that's why I do that. Then overdrive is another distortion. Distortion always adds harmonics. And as you add different layers, harmonics get removed. So you want to add them back in. That's the purpose of that overdrive. This will actually combo really well with the corpus, bringing out more of that metallic redux. 
at these settings, it adds a nice little top end because when you're going for this obnoxious trap sound, you want to put as much in that top end, like higher frequency range as you can. And it's fine because you can put a lot of stuff up there. You're going to have a lot of lower bass heavy sounds in the other layers. So the more stuff that you can keep away from that and more you can put into like the higher end, like those small little distortion differences, then the more in your face the sound is going to be. So that's why I'm doing that. And it's not like I'm going crazy with it, right? I'm, I'm adding little by little. We do that as well with this delay. This setting here is kind of like a metallic delay. So you achieve that with by clicking this here, taking it off sync, doing time, doing low milliseconds under 10, and then bumping that feedback up. Now I experimented with this, having the delay be more around the top end but I didn't like how that sounded. And I wanted it to be a little bit more warm. So that's why the delay metallic effect is centered more towards like the middle of the sound for that warmth. Dynamic tube, which is a really great thing to just slap onto anything because if you've watched my Okay, I'm going to stop plugging other videos, but I do have a video talking about Ableton plugins and this one just adds that analog feel to it. It's very, very subtle. But it's another layer of distortion in a way that makes it sound more analog. Not sure how it works. You just turn the bias until it activates. And it's just a very subtle, like almost humanization of the sound, even though we're making freaking robot noises. This reverb is specifically used for the reverb swells. So this is a good part time to talk about that. If we open up our automation, uh, you see these gigantic spikes of the reverb. And this is a very big effect used in trap music or even future bass, but where you swell the reverb into another note. That's where this, that like kind of off rhythm comes in. And this is just achieved. I just drag and drop reverb plugin, turn the decay up between like 10 and 20 seconds, and then just automate the dry wet to 100. There's probably a lot of different things I can use to uh, dial in the sound a bit better. Maybe in retrospect, I would have done that. Cut off a bit of the high end so it's a little less aggressive, but you know, I said I like the, the obnoxiousness. So last but not least, EQ. This EQ was done in context. So this is what I call context EQ. And what that means is I EQ while the rest of the song's playing. As nice as this sounded by itself, like sounds nice and crisp and great uh, by itself, you always have to think about how it sounds with the rest of the song. So I always do a context EQ. And it turns out that a lot of these high ends that I was adding in was clashing with a lot of these uh, symbols and stuff. So I made a high cut and a low cut because I have a lot of these womps happening as well. And now you're like, oh God, that sounds super dull now. Is it going to sound good? Well, in the mix, the answer is heck freaking yeah. We got our wombo combo and that's the processing for our main lead. Now I do have other layers in here and uh, rather than go over the why about it, I do have a layering video up on Patreon uh, to answer like the why I layer. But what I just end up doing is just rounding out the sound even a little bit more because like by itself without these layers, it works, but just needs a little bit more help. So I make transient. Give it a bit more bite. Stop. And that, <laughs> that, those long notes that you're hearing is when I'm pausing, is when I'm pausing the, uh, the song during a reverb swell. And so if you pause the song during a reverb swell, it'll just keep going on Ableton. And that's why you hear that. So essentially going back to this transient layer, it's literally a copy paste duplicate of more mail. But I've gone in here in the actual serum patch. I, I just changed the wavetable. I think I just picked a random one. I'll be hundred percent honest just to make it sound slightly different. Like I'm not, this isn't like friggin' rocket science for me. I, I just like, I, I pick it. So it's just slightly different. I changed the filter to a notch filter because I don't want the vocaliness of the bandpass filter that we got in the first one. And the biggest important change, like I said, volume is like the number one thing you can change on a sound to like really give it character envelope. Number one, if we compare that 
to more mayo. This is uh, more mayo's envelope. This is transient envelope. And my goal for this sound was to just be a little, like a little bite. Just to help out this and make it sound a little bit more punchy. And everything else is pretty much the same. Same effects, reverb filters changed a little bit. So it's not activating on the lower frequencies. That's it. As for its processing, the exact same. It's a copy paste and the context EQ is a little bit different because I EQ it according to all of the other sounds around it. Last layer is a phasey noise because I kind of want to give it a bit of, it's just, you know, I hear it in my head. Um, when I listen to ISO EXO stuff, there's almost like a phasey noise that I hear. So I just made that sound and added it as a layer. This one, it's just noise oscillator. That's all it is. I have hyper dimension to give it a little bit of wideness, distortion, because I know OTT will pull from it and reverb to give it a bit more space. But similar type of envelope to follow what Mayo does. And what you can do with phaser flanger, this arrow and turn on the envelope follower. So then this only activates when a sound plays versus it like constantly going back and forth. It only activates when there's a sound and it's also based off of how loud the sound is. So you get various different effects based on uh, the input. So it's very dynamic. For the rest of the processing, as you can see, I've done a bit of experimentation. I tried resonators. I tried adding corpus, tried adding overdrive, but Looks like I didn't like how it sounded. So you can just ignore these. And for good luck, I always like to add this samplifier sample. And this one, this one's actually uh, running through shifter to put it in key with the rest of it. This is like my good luck sample. I don't know. I always add it. You'll hear this sample in every song. Uh, EQ before Corpus because I wanted to add a, you know, I didn't want to have this sound exactly like it sounds all the time. So Corpus adds just that little bit of uh, spice reverb swell to match Mayo. And then using utility to make it less wide. And those are our layers for the actual lead itself. And very important to group it all together because I do have group processing, which just overall helps with mixing. Inside group processing, I do a mid side EQ. This is the only mid side EQ I use just to clean everything up. You don't use this stuff tends to sound messy because especially on the sides of the sound, you want to cut out the low end. That's all this is doing. Another context EQ that I'm doing to clean up like the rest of the sounds. Because when you layer everything together, you have to clean it up um, without it. It might sound a bit messier, too much high end and it just unifies it a lot more. This auto pan, I'm not sure if I end up using it, but the idea I had with this was to do like little wobbles with the synth, but I don't think I ended up doing that at all. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't end up using it at all, but I like it at around 2%, which gives it that slight little bit of movement. Once again, it's a volume thing. Little bit of dynamics that you can like add in. And then very standard mixing stuff. I use Smooth Operator. It operates very similar to Soothe, but this is a $40 version as opposed to a $300 version. And it's one another one of those safety things I put on just to make sure the mix stays a little cleaner. And then glue compressor at the very end to, to unify it all. And this is barely doing anything. I turn the threshold down so that there's just like tiniest little bit of activation. And that's how I use that. And then lastly, a utility, because what I actually found was this lead was a little too wide. What it ended up happening, if I turn this utility off and then I switch and then I switch the song to mono. You can hear like during these specific sections, we're losing the lead a little bit which is why turning the utility on, right-clicking, clicking to mid side mode helps bring it out more. You hear how we don't lose that now? That's because one, we check in mono. Since this is our lead, I don't want to lose it at all. I make sure to push it to the mid just a little bit, which has barely any effect when I switch it back to stereo, but has a big effect when I switch it to mono. And if you got this far, thank you for sticking around. If you like this type of video, you'll find more of it on Patreon. I have lots of videos like this where I go super in depth and can also get this project file. If you want to see absolutely everything, thank you for watching. Now go make some bangers. Peace.